Mormons talk about feeling the Holy Ghost as a burning in the bosom. I guess I have experienced something similar to this. I don't know if it was actual like heartburn, but a sense of warmth and love and joy kind of through this region. Also, I had experiences where I felt um, inspired and enlightened by certain ideas and stories. The current Mormon prophet, Russell Nelson, has described the Holy Ghost as spine tingling. So let's take a look at these different effects, both the burning in the bosom, the sense of elation, and the tingling in the spine. First, I want to talk about a scientific experiment conducted by Dr. Michael Ferguson while he was at University of Utah. Dr. Ferguson is an ex-Mormon Harvard neuroscientist. I've done an interview with him about science and spirituality, which I'll post in the description below. He describes this experiment in his TED talk called This Is Your Brain on God, which I will also post in the description box below. In the course of this experiment, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints were put in an fMRI machine and were made to read quotes from various church leaders, Thomas Monson, Jeffrey Holland, Dieter Uchtdorf, etc. And then they were to push a button when they sensed that they were feeling the Holy Ghost, the burning in the bosom, the tingling in the spine. And the findings were quite interesting. When they read quotes uh, written by their general authorities, they felt the Holy Ghost more than when they read quotes by uh, other Christian leaders like Billy Graham, Desmond Tutu, and people like that. The thing they didn't know is that all of the quotes were written by C.S. Lewis, which betrayed a certain cognitive bias that Mormons had toward members of their own in-group. When they thought they were reading uh, their own leaders, they felt the Holy Ghost more than when they heard, when the, than when they read quotes that they thought were written by somebody else. Another interesting finding is that the sensation of feeling the Holy Ghost also made them more receptive to quotes by outgroup authorities, which I think is really interesting because it shows that um, the experience of the Holy Ghost can be biased, but it can also op genu genuinely open up your heart to be more inclusive toward outgroup individuals, which I think is really cool. During the course of this experiment, they were able to observe that when people feel the Holy Ghost, it ignites three parts of the brain. These parts of the brains are associated with our dopamine system, the chemical that's responsible for our reward pleasure system. It's the same system that makes you feel good when you have sex, that makes you feel good when you gamble or do drugs. It's just part of our natural chemistry. So right off the bat, we can see that um, the experience of feeling the Holy Ghost isn't this a material experience, it's not something that is mystical, it's something that we can actually measure happening in the brain in real time. And I would go so far as to say if you were to put anybody in an fMRI machine and have them read quotes from their religious figures, they would feel and experience the same things, those same parts of the brains lighting up with dopamine. Now let's talk about the psychological mechanisms that we recognize as the Holy Ghost. First you have the burning in the bosom. Mormons tend to think that they are the ones, the only ones who can receive the true gift of the Holy Ghost and that everyone else only has a portion of the light or can feel the light of Christ or whatever have you. However, scientists have observed this phenomenon occurring within many types of people, non-religious or religious. They call it elevation. Psychologist Dr. Jonathan Haidt, author of The Righteous Mind, describes elevation as an emotional response to moral beauty. Through his studies, he observed that people experience elevation as, quote, warm, pleasurable sensations in the chest. And again, this is not just Mormons, this is people of all faith and non-faith. He also observed that the feeling of elevation can fluctuate depending on whether a person is within an in-group or an out-group. If you're surrounded by people who share the same belief as you, you're more likely to experience elevation than if you're surrounded by strangers with different beliefs. Dr. Haidt also observed that people are likely to experience more elevation when they're witnessing an act or words by an authority figure. So when you're listening to someone who you hold up as a spiritual religious authority, you're more likely to feel that elevation which again can be is neither good nor bad it's just a fact of the matter but then when when mormons or other religious people you know hear their prophet or their guru or their leader speaking and they think oh i feel this this burning in my bosom this great uh, sense of awe and peace and love and joy this is it's proof that my religion is true that this group i'm surrounded by is the one true chosen group that's just bias and it's just not true people of all groups Feel this. Another interesting observation from Jonathan Haidt is that 
um, elevation also has its opposite, which is moral disgust. When we see things that offend our sensibilities, we, we feel genuine repulsion and pulling away a kind of dark, confusing cognitive dissonance. And so when, you, when Mormons or others hear things that contradict their faith and they think, oh, I don't feel the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost left the room. It's not the Holy Ghost leaving the room, it's just your own internal mechanism responding to something that you've been programmed to treat with disgust. It has nothing to do with reality or metaphysical truth, it's just your own biased chemistry playing out in the way that it was programmed to play out. Now let's talk about the tingling in the spine that President Nelson likes to talk about. If you've been on YouTube for more than a week, you should be familiar with ASMR. Auto Meridian Sensory Response. ASMR is an experience categorized by static-like or tingling sensation on the skin um, that begins on the scalp and moves down our entire spine. I can think of countless experiences as a Mormon where I was sitting in church or in some kind of meeting or class and someone would say something that I, was, I thought was profound and I'd feel this tingling sensation up my whole body uh, in my mind, sort of like this whole full body orgasm. And again, this has nothing to do with objective truth. It's just our bodily system reacting to outward stimuli. I thought it was really interesting that I read that uh, one of the most common triggers for the ASMR experience is people talking in low, hushed tones. So it's no wonder that Mormons have been conditioned to associate the low, hushed, slow speaking of their leaders with the sense of feeling the Holy Ghost. <laughs> that keepeth God's commandments, receiveth truth and light, until he's glorified in truth and knoweth all things. Combine that with what we talked about with elevation, with being surrounded by uh, same believing peers, listening to a common authority speak, of course you're gonna feel that elation and that ASMR experience because that's just how your body has been conditioned to respond. It says nothing about the truthfulness of your beliefs or the chosenness of your crowd. It just is you being a human because any kind of human put in those same circumstances or surrounded by people who believe with them, looking at the same authority figure, will experience the same exact thing. Another psychological mechanism to be aware of is the Barnum effect. Uh, this effect convinces us that vague information applies directly to us. Think of every personality test or astrology chart that you've ever read. It's general terms that could apply to everybody, but they're specific enough that you think, oh my God, they're describing me perfectly. So when Mormons read the scriptures, when Mormons hear a talk in church and they think, oh my God, this was exactly just what I needed. God gave me this thing. And wow, they feel that elevation. Wow, they feel that ASMR. When in reality, it's just the Barma effect that lots of people will react that same way because it's general enough to describe a lot of different people who are in very similar circumstances. Because as much as we want to believe that our human experience is, is wildly unique and no one feels what we feel and no one's going through what we're going through, most of us share a lot more experiences than we tend to believe. If you associate these internal biological mechanisms with objective truth, you're bound to go wrong because this is just your body reacting to things you like, not necessarily the things that are true. So that's how the Holy Ghost works. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when we have a new video come out. If you like this video, let me know and I can do other ones like it. Thank you so much, have a good day full of elevated feelings and spine-tingling ASMR. <laughs> Bye.